This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. Yeah, it's hard right now. It's tough. It sucks. You want to crawl in a hole and die. But this could be the best thing that's ever happened to you. Justin Burke. Then we actually take better care of her than our plants. Oh, you're talking about Susan. You're back on that? Yeah. And Mitchell O'Brien. I watered all of the plants. All of them. It is the 4th of March, 2024. My name is Corey Winfield. Welcome to the 217 Recovery Podcast with friends, Justin Burke. What's up? Mitchell O'Brien. Update on the plants that are watered today. Yes. Yes. All of them? All, well, actually, yes. Nice. Yes, I had leftover water, so I did Justin's Gosh, too. There's nothing like yeah. having leftover water when you're watering plants. Yeah. You're like, what do I do with this? <laughs> right. Do you put it in the toilet? Do you just throw it outside for like... Throw some crystals in it and make some that skank sh- plants, you know, to get that water. <laughs> and what do you do with it, you know? And you don't want to overwater your plants, so then you just, I don't know. Turn into that structured water that we're going to be selling. The sober people problems right there. <laughs> for sure. So what do I do with the extra water for the plants? Can I ask yourself that sometimes? If you've never asked yourself that, then what are you doing with your life, man? <laughs> like, we've all had that opportunity to, to say that and to, you know come to that realization so no you guys uh wanted to talk to you on friday but it was just not gonna happen <laughs> yeah, uh, we tried lucifer joined us and we were not able to publish it we were not able to record it like and see see people don't give satan enough credit because he tries so hard to bring us down he tries and we had a great event Last Thursday, mm-hmm. Recovery mm-hmm. Stories, Message of Hope, Part 2. Yeah, that was fabulous. You both spoke at it, and we're going to talk to you both about how that went in just a second. But we had a great event. It was like over 140 people there. Like, we couldn't squeeze one more person in. Right. No. And the first one, we had like 90 people at, something like at 93, something like that. And so, like, to add another 44 to it or whatever, I'm not good at math, apparently. But to add more people to it... um. It was it was crazy. It was nuts, mm-hmm. and it was good. And people were smiling, happy, happy, having a good time. Uh, we fed them spaghetti. We had salad. We had some brownies for dessert, and we had some beverages, pop stuff like that, coffee. Um, Traverse City Event Center, also known as the Traverse City Comedy Club, they hooked us up. They took care of a lot of stuff and cut us a really good deal on it. And you know, it's not about making money. Events about letting people go for free and kind of you know, paying for everything. And we kind of did that again and have a couple bucks Mm -hmm. saved up for part three, which we think we're going to do in June, but it's a good event. So we do that. And then we come back and we're trying to talk about it. And then we had everybody here. We had you, Mitch, we had you, Justin, Marnie was here. Adam was here and my office isn't that big. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to test out the discord and how to do podcasts on discord and stuff. So we're like, Hey, this would be a perfect time. So you and Adam go out there me, Marnie, Justin here, and it just could not get it to work. <laughs> like we, we could hear you for a second, and then we couldn't hear you again. And then we finally said, screw it, let's just record it into the board. And I'm recording my board, and then my board locks up, mm-hmm. which doesn't happen. I'm like, what is going on? Lucifer, Satan. Mm-hmm. Nice try. But we're back. Not today. Yeah, not today, Satan. <laughs> not today. Today, Jesus says, update your board, which I did. He sends us messages like that sometimes, you know, God does. Like sometimes you just think, you know, how come this isn't happening? How come what's wrong? And then he just sends you a message. It's like, update your, update your Roadcaster Pro. Update your Roadcaster Pro or I'm going to shut your speakers off at yeah. an event. It won't work. Thank, yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. So we're all updated, ready to go today. Yeah. So Mitch, it was kind of comical, but it was kind of perfect how we kicked it off. Uh, it was my fault. Totally. Uh, Corey, woman by the name of Corey Smoker, was asked to MC it like two hours before. And she got there a little late, so I didn't have a chance to really talk to her before. And um, bless her heart, but six o'clock comes around. I'm going to start the cameras because I wanted to record the event. And she just jumps up on stage and is like, All right, everybody, welcome. And I was like, What is going on? Like, hold on, we're not ready. 
And I was thinking to myself, there's no way Mitch is going to get up there without <laughs> me pinning a microphone to his chest. Like, he knows the routine. Oh, there goes say, Mitch. Yeah, Mitch is on the say, stage. Yeah. Okay, well, if they have to start their story over, they'll have to start their story over. It wasn't all just her. It wasn't all just her because I just, every time somebody said, Mitch, get on stage, I just went to, because I went up there twice mm-hmm. and I screwed it up the second time too. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it was it was cool and it gave you a chance to do a practice a little improv. <laughs> and and it, it worked out. It worked out well. And I think that actually kind of helped you be a little more comfortable when you actually started telling your story, which was for short. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was under three minutes because it's supposed to go three to five minutes. Yeah, I was wondering when that was going to come up because it felt super short. And I know I left a lot out. And so. I think being short, it kind of let other people think they could go long um, on unprepared stories. But we were not going to talk about that. No. And... You did a good job, though. Um, I screwed up your video. Oh. I put at the beginning, well, the program I used, if I cut something, apparently I cut the date before I changed it. So there's two parts of it. It's like a waveform, just like you're in your, uh, if you think of like Adobe Audition, you see the waveform. Mm -hmm. Well, if I cut it, so the first part of it says 229.24, and then for just a second, bloop, it clips to the other one. And it says 10, 29, 23. Ah. And it's, so it's like, oh, shit. I was like, damn it. I messed that up. Time traveling. Marty's like, I didn't even see that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I did. But of course, after I published it to the world. So there you go. I did that on one of the reels I did uh, yesterday. And once you do a reel on Facebook, you don't edit it. You have to, there's no editing the redo. words that you put on. You have to delete it and start over. And it kind of gave me a little bit of a pain. So I was like, you know what? I just, I, I put forgot where I should have wrote forget. And I'm just going to forgot about it. So <laughs> <laughs> people are watching it. They're liking it. And it's fun. So I'm just going to forgot about that one. That's yeah. what you got to do, man. You took, you took an English class from me then? Uh, my mother. I was, got your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was homeschooled back then. So Explains a lot. <laughs> Got your ass two times because you can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, nice. Which and, you would believe if you heard my recovery story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True that. <laughs> but you can check out. It's on our Facebook page. It's published and it's you'll see the date switching correct, but whatever. Justin, you jumped up on stage. How were you feeling? Because I came up and got you and it was kind of some frantic stuff. I'm like, let's go now. Nervous. I was like, come get ready. Very unsure of myself. Just everything like you would feel during your first public speaking event. Hmm. What was scary? Your, your first? Well, that wasn't your first public speaking event, was it? In front of a major crowd like that, yes. Okay. Was that scarier than doing it for the first time? Mm, I don't really, really remember my first time. <laughs> we all got your ass. <laughs> uh, sorry, we'll delay the button there. Huh? You don't remember your first time doing it? No, not really. Let's talk about it. Mm, I remember mine. I remember mine. I think unless mm. Marty's listening, then I don't remember mine at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, that was a lot of years ago. Was it? Yeah, it was like twenty three years ago. 24. Oh, so you remember something about it? You remember mm. how old you were? Like fourteen, but Dang. that's about it. Fourteen, fifteen, somewhere around there. Mitch, oh, we have. Age? I have to out myself on yeah, being a late yeah, bloomer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nineteen. Mm, I was sixteen. Right. I didn't want to just give mine away. <laughs> I did it. It was like because mm, there was this one chick in school. I was like, that's I right. I'm good on that. I was talking with somebody I worked with, and they they were psyching me up for it. Really, because they knew it was going to happen. And Whoa, like, dude, it's it's not going to be great. It's your first time. Just. Let it not be great. You get better at it as you go. And uh, that was the most accurate <laughs> description of how it worked for me. Hmm. So I'm not getting into detail. I just want to know age. Oh. Like details come from Justin. Yeah. He's not married. <laughs> he I have a girlfriend. Uh, me either. Oh, that's right. So we can get into your details, I guess, too. Yeah. Just not mine. Yeah. I, just, I, I honestly don't really remember. I remember using a rubber and I hated it. We call that condom. We call mm. that protection. Condom, whatever. Mm. I don't have to sound so yeah, hood. I, had to, I, had to do I know you're watching then, Black too. Mafia Family right now on <laughs> Stars, but you don't have to sound so hood, man. You can call it protection. Protection, yeah. yeah. And I, I remember I used protection and didn't like it, but that was about it. Hmm. 
Do you remember? Was it a woman? Yes. <laughs> Mitch, I'm just saying. I'm pretty, these are questions that I have. I remember her name. Oh, what was her name? I'm not. No. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put her on blast. No. Okay. Can you? What's it rhyme with? Spell her name. What's it rhyme with? <laughs> no. Yeah. What's, what's it rhyme with? Nothing. It, rhymes with nothing. With Dristina. No skin. Does it rhyme with Mary? No. Hen? No. Tara? No. Sarah? No. Bitchell? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. Rudy? No. Beth? No. Brittany? No. You'll never guess her name. Bridget? No. Sal? That's the same one of my daughter's mom. Oh. Christina? No. Sal? No. Sally? No. Jennifer? No. Aaron? No. Something Savannah or Heaven or something like Cheyenne. that? Cheyenne? No. Nevea? Cherokee? No. Smooth? No. Adam? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, oh, whatever. This guessing game is getting boring. So, you don't want to say it? No. All right. It's your last chance. Yeah. It's the last opportunity it. to say your name. One I'm more guess? No. Let her know you're thinking about her today. No. Amanda? No. Oh, damn. Melanie? No. Heather? Sha- Shaquita? No. no. Lakeisha? No. LaShonda? No. Maria? No. Sharona? No. Ooh, he paused for that one. The no, fine. We're getting close. No. Marie. Latrina? No. Shannon. No. Latoya. No. <laughs> okay, DMX. <laughs> arr, arr, arr. <laughs> X come give it to you. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> come here. Let me put this little thing on my thing. <laughs> I was flying off. Well, I didn't fit. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of Adam, his name was brought up. He is, and we were going to have him on, but he had to go. Uh, take care of some business, but we're going to have him on the podcast today because he's moving from 217 Recovery to an uh, organization that we work with a lot, uh, Addiction Treatment Services, mm-hmm. and he has a position over there, and we're really, really happy for him. And I think it's going to be a great move for Adam uh, personally and professionally. Yep. You know, Addiction Treatment Services here in Traverse City, they are the treatment center, man. They they have it going on. And like I said, we work close with them. We respect those people. Uh, Marnie you know, still works there, but I think it's a good move for him though. And I'm really proud of him. And the way that kind of things came around, it was, it was easy for Adam and myself to both just completely screw it up. You know, I had a chance to completely screw it up. He had a chance to completely screw it up, but to like sit down with people and we both, Adam and I talked about it, about how, you know, being in recovery, it allows you time to think sometimes and not react and not make decisions so hastily when you want to so bad, but then you, you think about it and you realize, well, this is not how to handle things. But, you know, the fact that we had a chance to, you know, talk about some things and, you know, this opportunity happened and it was just like, dude, like you got to do it, bro. Right. And, you know, I'm proud of them. And it's just one of those things, man, that like just another, another thing of another positive thing about being in recovery. Mm hmm. You know, so big props to Adam and, you know, his new future and career with addiction treatment services. And yeah. We'll still see him and hopefully he'll stop by every once in a while for a podcast and, you know, give us some Adam isms. And if you're not familiar with an Adam, Adam ism, dude, I, the, my son was God. Like they're mm-hmm. like he, we, what? she, that shouldn't have happened. Like it, I don't know how, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, but, no. um, not at all. Yeah, that's an admin, isn't it? Is it, is it, is it, is it? I, I think I told him after that statement, it was called intercourse. Yeah, I'm the latest bloomer here, and I know how it happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that, that that was the fun one, and we can always go back and pull parts and pieces, and that's the beauty of podcasting. <laughs> but no, nah, it it'll be good for him, and you know, I'm sure he will come back for a podcast every once in a while. Yeah. We'll work close with him. Yeah, over there at his new career. But so, Justin, back to your sex story or your um, being on stage. That was worse <laughs> than sex. Yeah. Just nervousness and all that. Yeah. But when you got done, did it feel like, wow, that was pretty quick? Yeah, I kind of felt that way. But when I was up there, it seemed like forever. 
Which is similar to the first time he had sex. That's what Mary said, right? <laughs> Ashley. Mary. Alicia. No. It's Mary. <laughs> he didn't say no when I said Alicia. But anyways. <laughs> Aaliyah? Oh. No. <laughs> but anyways, like, I forgot, like, Shante. 75% of my story. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't wait to put it together. I have to. Piece it together, see how how yours went. But I thought you did a pretty good job, man. I could tell you were you were pretty nervous, but now you did it. Yeah, I did do it. Yeah, you can do it again, right? Sure. Yeah. You and, showed up. You got up there, and that's like step one. Yeah. And Jeff and Mike, they both killed it too, man. Like they did really good. Mike was really funny, and um. <laughs> He was talking about how he says inappropriate things and this and that. He was like, and someone told me, like, that's going to cost me my job. And he's like, and somebody yelled out, and it did. And he was like, yeah, and it did. And he starts <laughs> laughing. You know, that was, that was hilarious because there was some stuff that kind of could be tense. And, again, it's it's how you handle things in recovery. And, you know, I think Mike did a great job of that. And I was worried. I was I worry about everybody. I didn't worry about Jeff too much. I think I was pretty confident that Jeff was going to get up there and, do a pretty good job especially after the interview i did with him the day before mm-hmm. on the podcast but you know like mike i was like oh no you know there was some stuff that oh i hope he doesn't you know da, da, da. and there was another person who didn't practice at all and it didn't really pan out no it didn't go as, as well as I had, I had hoped and i think it was because there was no practice there was no like chance to coach hey this is what's going on and i don't i don't know if that was done intentionally but you yeah. know the recovery story's message of hope is about that you know like we want to we're not going to share about oh i used to drink half gallons every single day and blah 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 i was the baddest mf on the block you know you know like we want to give a message of hope in there and the story part is like a key moment in your recovery not like what you're going through today not what just happened yesterday but like a key moment that turned a light bulb on for you and you guys did a really good job at least of that part and, you know, uh, Adam, I think he did good. He he was funny because he was like, yeah, I, I recorded it. And I listened to how many times I said, um, and, uh, and the first time I had to cut a lot of those out of his, his video. And I was like giving him shit for it. And <laughs> so he's like, well, I'm practicing. I'm not going to say that anymore. And I think he even made reference to it before he started. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay. So I got my hand out and started counting them, uh, 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 I got to like five or six. <laughs> I was like, "All right, I'm stopping." <laughs> I was like, hey, "This is yeah, and we're just gonna throw that out the window." But it's hard, you know. And when you're up there and you're talking in front of people, it's yeah. tough. And you might go up there with a plan. You oh, I have this. Even when you're reading it, you mess it up sometimes. So it just takes practice. It just takes courage, and it eventually, it like flips from being scared to like something you can harness. And and use, but you got to be careful not to use too much. You know, you don't want to be up there like rah, right like a Winfield. Yeah. Uh, I don't, oh yeah. I don't think he does it. Not up on the stage at the events. Mm-mm. No. Maybe <laughs> in here sometimes, but <laughs> yeah. Here I go. Wow. This is his. This is his cage, though. He can be as well as he wants. Yeah. To be. <laughs> yeah. That's <And> good reference. <laughs> then I, I wasn't aware. I was still waiting to announce this too. But I guess they announced that there was a meeting last week and I started getting messages like people telling me, congrats, buddy. Like, that's awesome. But the UFAM rally is coming up on the 16th of May. Cheer sounds. Yeah. Yeah. And I was approached about a month or so ago. And like at first the plan was because Parker, Marnie and I's son, will be into this world apparently the due date of the 26th of May. Right. And my plan was to not go and send you guys Mm -hmm. like, all right, you guys go have fun, tear it up. And then I was approached and they're like, Hey, um, we were thinking about this and we would really like you to MC it. And I said, what? I'm not going to be there. And I was like, yeah, I was like, wow. But it was such an honor even be asked and i told him i was like well let me talk it over with marty but i'm supposed to have a baby around that time you know like within 10 days and i don't think those dates are that accurate no as far as like those due dates no no so it's an estimated date 
What oh. did they tell you that week oh. before? What was that? I think you confused Mitch with anything. that word you used. <laughs> Is that when somebody from Alaska estimates something? Estimate? <laughs> Is that what happens? Things? Yeah. Is that uh, how they 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 build we're not their igloos? Cross my they, English they, on the podcast. Estimate. We do. We, we, we do it bad enough in the blogs, <laughs> not in the podcast, too. <laughs> this is, it. it's, it's not new, but like when you're making an igloo, you need to estimate the size before you build it, right? Mm-hmm. Here's this <laughs> douche. <laughs> an arrogant douche nozzle. <laughs> Fabulous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> yes, I am. They're just a, a date. You're right. So. I just figured. So we worked it out to where uh, I called them back and was like, look, I talked to Marnie about it. And I, I like kind of teared up when I was telling her about it. You know, it was just like one of those moments where five years to this the, this very day right now, the 4th of March, 2019, I was in treatment. And mm-hmm. we went to the first, youth, or not the first UFAM, but the first time we went, we had this rickety table drop i had to iron the thing on it was horrible it was like a justin job on it you know like it was too little and then the, the table they told us they had six foot tables we bought a six foot table cover and they gave us eight foot table when we got there and i'm like what didn't fit it looked sloppy mess and rob was like no we're gonna put it on there anyway so it was just like pictures i just shook my head you know but we showed up and you know we got on like as a media sponsor so they put our like logo on everything which i thought was cool and it was just me, Rob, and a couple of other people, and then it just kind of went downhill from there. But <laughs> like to be, you know, where I'm at now today, and then five years later, getting a call going, "Hey, we want you to MC that." Like, if you would have like again, like recovery life is so cool, and you can mm-hmm. accomplish things that you didn't even think were possible. Right. If you would have came up to me at that first event and been like, "Nice table drop, dickhead!" Uh, in five <laughs> years, <laughs> you're gonna be asked to MC this up there, and I'll be like, "The what?" <laughs> and this is what you're gonna be doing, and this you're gonna have employees, and this is what I'm like, "What?" And you're gonna pay the IRS almost two grand because you're late on your taxes. <laughs> I'm like, "What?" <laughs> I'm gonna do all of that. <laughs> what do you mean taxes? <laughs> I don't know how to do taxes. Oh, you're gonna figure it out, and you're gonna figure out being late sucks. <laughs> sucks for nonprofits. Well, but. and that's because they don't get no taxes from them, so they're like. How do we? How do we get that? Mm-hmm. Get them to pay. Get some fines in there. Got your ass. <laughs> Got my ass. Yeah. Uh, guess who's not gonna be late again? This guy. Yeah. But you accepted? I don't think we got to that part of the. Yeah. Anything. So yeah. I called Christian back. Uh, he's from Lifeboat Recovery out of Lansing, and I was like, "Yeah, I talked it over with Marnie, and I'm I'm down, man. I'll I'll do it." And. He's like, cool, you know, and I was like, but the baby thing. And he's like, all right, well, we'll just have a plan B. And he's like, if something comes up and it's too late, for- <laughs> <laughs> you got you to gotta get out of town to go have a baby or, or if the baby comes and you can't make it, you know, we can we'll have a, We'll have a backup, you know, and he's like, if anything, I'll just get up there and do it, you know, if I have to. But he's like, I really want you to do it. And we think you'd be great at it. And, and I was like, wait, are, are you sure you got the right person? And he's like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, are you sure? Because there's another Corey that does some stuff over there. I was like, maybe that's who you're thinking of. I'm like, no, dude, it's you. Like, there's like four people in there that mentioned your name, Corey Winfield. Like, mm-hmm. they know who you are. I was like, oh. Professional radio broadcast. Like, yeah, of course they do. Makes what, sense. That's to me. what I do, man. Yeah. Well, your your story reminds me of uh, of something that happened in my life. That it's like you you're asked to be on UFAM. And at first you're like, nah, man, I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> Jesus standing over in the corner, like with his arms crossed, tapping his toe, like, hey, man, what are you doing? And that kind of reminds me of when we first met, and you were like, hey, man, you think about come working for me? Mm-hmm. And I was like, nah, man, I'm good. <laughs> Jesus over there in the corner, going, Mitchell, tapping right. his foot with his arms crossed. <laughs> Thinking you moron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know this Dumbass. vape store is cool and all, but I put you here to meet this guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Got home that night, he grabbed me by the collar and you know, smacked me a little bit. And yeah. So what's really funny about that is when you first started there, I think Marnie came in and bought some coils and then gets home and it's like, here's your coils. And I was like, these aren't the right ones. She's like, what? And I called and they're like, oh, we got a new guy named Mitch. He, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Come get the new ones. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. So I had to go back up there. So like, 
Yeah, that was God's way of going, this guy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're going to know who he is. I did do that when I first started there. I got good at it, though. Mm-hmm. I was good at my job by the time I left. So, so I'm like, how couldn't you just look at our account and say, these are the ones you've been buying for the past six months. This is it. <laughs> Instead of the stuff that we never bought before. And I was like, what? <laughs> but yeah, that was God's like way of going, pay attention to this guy. You know, and then I'm like, oh, here's the new guy. Like, okay, this is the new guy that screwed us on the coils and I drive back up here. <laughs> That's why you always kind of side eyed me, like, because I would notice the like the sober shirt or the recovery shirts, and this we didn't talk about it until about I think it was March of last year, really. Mm-hmm. But I I noticed, and um, you guys would come in, and sometimes you'd have your entourage, Marnie, and sometimes Justin, and mm-hmm. and uh, I'd always. Be like, oh yeah, just a recovery guy, and then you'd always be looking at me like, mm, he fucked up my coils. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, what did I do, man? <laughs> no, because nobody they they wouldn't tell me when I did that. They'd just be like, hey, these are these, not those. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it was this guy. It was meant to be, though. <laughs> yeah, it really was, and we started talking about it, and then you actually would come with me to Dukoski as I yeah. talked to the guys. You're like, that'd be kind of fun to do. And you, like could tell, just loved it. <laughs> like the two minutes I gave you. I don't even think I gave you two minutes. No. Well, you usually gave me two or, <laughs> two or three. <laughs> you usually gave me two or three minutes about ten minutes after Man. it was supposed to be done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds more accurate. The guys are all, that. Ha- that well, it's accurate because it literally happened at least one of the times. Like the guys are all like, hey. I got stuff to do. I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette. Yeah, and they're like, "We gotta talk to this guy now." And I'm like, "How do I even?" Okay, hi guys, I'm Mitch, and that was great. And what Corey said. We'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> but, and I used to this kind of like stand up comedy almost. It's like, how can I work in this new joke? Yeah, you did. But I mean, it it was good, and and me being there, even the little that you let me speak, <laughs> it was <laughs> it, it helped me be comfortable because at the the event just the other day i didn't really have anxiety for getting up in front of people and i don't know why and i think i've been working on it with the podcast doing this one with my own because i just i get the same feeling of like multiple people are going to be listening to this so it's almost like having that crowd in front of you the video stuff on facebook i've been doing they're cheesy Mm -hmm. they're terrible they're whatever but 300 people saw one of them and that kind of poked me in the anxiety bone a little bit, going to Dukoski, talking in front, of, you know, in front of people, and it all kind of accumulated. So when it came time to get up there in front of people at the event on Thursday, I was excited. And like I said, there's really no, I expected the opposite. I expected to be super anxious about it, and I wasn't. And now I'm excited to get up there and do it again. And I even asked you if I could MC it because mm-hmm. I just. I see how, and we can't blame people, but I just see how it works. And I think I could do a really good job of that. Yeah, I think so too. And Corey, I think she'd do a great job. I gave her zero direction. Yeah. I, right. I told her zero what I wanted or what it, you know, yep. what, what. So it, she did a great job for just keep being thrown into the fire. Yep. And looking back, I probably should have just done it. But this is like a long time ago, I heard that you can't really empty your own event. It's kind of. I remember when you said that to Marnie in October, and she was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you really shouldn't, you know? And and I, I wanted to do more on the cameras and, and more recording stuff and some about the audio. I don't know, man. It's, it's not unairable, as they would say in radio, but it, it doesn't sound as crisp as the first one. And I don't know if something wasn't hooked up right, if I didn't have something pushed in all the way, or if it really was the echo of the microphone, because I don't remember it being so echoey before, and... Big Perm was like, no, this is the same way it was before. And I was like, I don't think so. Maybe it had something to do with the wireless mic compared to a wired mic. I don't think that would have anything to do with it. Maybe the frequencies mess with each other. Mm. I don't know. I don't don't know. But our recording in there, it's. I don't think that was picked up by the camera. I think that was picked up by our, our clips when we did the practice videos, which are hilarious. Yeah, if you haven't seen those, go two seventeen. Oh no, they're not at two seventeen recovery dot com, but they're on our Facebook page and our YouTube. Yeah. So check those out. Those are those, those turned out funny. really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I showed my mom those. She laughed. Yeah, they're funny. They were good. And one she take. Mixed was great. 
One take. That's all we do, baby. That's when you we start do. fake crying. How we do it around here. <laughs> yeah, and I just cut them off. Like, that's good. Like, none of that was scripted. It was just all improv, too. Every yeah. single bit of it. Like, it was just like, guys, get in here. Let's come record this video. And you're like, all right, what do you want me to say? I'm, I don't know. Let's do it. <laughs> the best part, the Kevin Costner and I, Batman. You thought it was Michael, Michael Keaton. That was real. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was Aww. fun, and and people like those videos, and they're like more funny ones too. Please, you know, and people are commenting on them and stuff. But but that just that's the fun that we have in recovery. And some people say that's just ridiculous, but they can't say it looks like those guys are having a horrible time. <laughs> right? They cannot say that one bit. You know, it looks like those guys are having fun in recovery, and that's what we're trying to put out there. And you can do whatever you want, man. That's the kind of feedback I'm getting on the Facebook reels that I do, mm-hmm. and they're not nearly as as put together and professional looking as what you do. But I get on there. I do something. Sometimes it's straightforward. Hey, this is what I got going on. Sometimes I just do something funny. The bear mask. Weird. The bear. <laughs> <laughs> you can see my face through it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was the bear. I wasn't there. Yeah. But like. <laughs> well, I have to, and today might be a really good. Well, I got to go do a human rights commission meeting. But uh, we'll have to do the. Because you have a cologne. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> called bear i was trying to fit in the coming soon you know mm-hmm. get, get on there look at the youtube videos but bear part two coming soon yeah your fra- your new fragrance is called black <laughs> black <laughs> bear black or should we call it dark or what or does it, or is black the way blacker blacker <laughs> <laughs> no because if we do, all right it'll have to be black because then blacker has to be the next one yeah <laughs> And we, we already have, like, and we, I don't think we could send the, the well, I don't want to spoil it and say, but the prop, I don't even know if we can send it back yet right now because <laughs> we've had it for so long. Right. Well, as you say, I, I might keep it. Uh, just might. So. Yeah, after Mitch tried it on, he said, he's like, I'm buying this. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have to, we'll have to negotiate. <laughs> it's, used, it's used now, so. <laughs> he he ripped tag the tags on. off. <laughs> right. I didn't, actually. It's still on there, but. <laughs> that, that's not that's not how we do things you know that's not recovery <laughs> no. safe or whatever it's ethics that didn't take, I didn't take those yet <laughs> you can't just use something for a video and then send it back to Amazon that's unethical <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh. here's your here's your quarterly bonus Mitch it's a jean jacket <laughs> oh no I just said it oh Oop. oh <laughs> at least you got one Mitch oh. yeah all right i blew a tire last week or the week before so i don't get one yeah he has been he's been his monthly or quarterly bonus on a new tire a new everything justin screws up the vehicles he drives it he your just, bonus is getting your your bridge toll paid back <laughs> yeah uh, oh, shout out. but yeah so watch for that video coming soon um maybe by the end of this week i don't see why not that'd be fun yeah i'd be done yeah We'll do that. I got a busy week. Yeah, you do. Yeah, let me know so I can wear my blue jeans that day. So. Okay. Well, thanks, Justin. And thanks, Mitch, for joining me on the podcast today. It was fun. And nice yeah. little recap of the event like we didn't have time to do or we didn't have time to do on Friday. But I'm glad we got it in today. Well, we had time on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Lucifer was over us. Yeah. <laughs> you are not going to talk about this today. No. <laughs> but, yeah, Jesus came through with that update. <laughs> for the roadcaster pro too yeah, jesus so. with them updates this is what he's yeah. always in, always doing them updates All right yeah, absolutely but thanks again guys and we'll talk again later this week how about that all right later bye thanks for listening to the 217 recovery podcast when a bunch of free shit from 217 recovery go to the app or the website 217 recovery.com